Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to implement fluid typography for your headings in Oxygen using the new CSS function, Clamp. Now, before we dive in, I do want to note that there are a few browsers that do not support Clamp. We'll see here that Internet Explorer obviously has some issues, which we expect with anything new, that it won't work in Internet Explorer, so we just ignore that. And then we have Opera Mini, uh, Opera Mobile, and Firefox for Android is probably the most notable one where you'll see some issues with using MinMax or Clamp. Luckily, the most widely used browsers for both mobile and desktop are supported. So this is a pretty safe way to get fairly broad coverage with very little code. So we're gonna jump over here and I'll just show you what the front end looks like before we apply any fluid typography. We're gonna scale this down and you can see that my headings start to wrap and then after a certain point though, they're not gonna wrap anymore. Instead, they're just going to overflow, which looks like at about uh, 410 pixels, we start seeing major problems. So we're gonna fix this with some CSS in Oxygen. So let's jump back over into Oxygen. And here's all our headings that we've already set up. And I've already gone into Manage, Settings, Global Styles, Headings, and set these all to the sizes that I wanted. So now I know that my H1 is gonna be 105 pixels, my H2 66, so on and so forth. If you're following along, I'd recommend going ahead and grabbing a notebook or a notepad or something and writing down these sizes because we need to know what size our headings are supposed to be on desktop screens. Now we're gonna jump over to manage style sheets and we're either gonna add a style sheet if we don't have one already, or if you do have one, you can just go ahead and, and edit that style sheet. So the first thing that we know is we want these headings to be their natural sizes at say above 1120 pixels. So we're gonna make a media query, media max width 1120 pixels. And then we'll just open that up and get ready to put in some rules here. So that basically means anything we put inside this media query is only going to take effect up to 1120 pixels and at 1121 pixels, it doesn't matter anymore. So that means we can still control the styles of these elements the normal way for desktop screens, but as soon as those, that viewport width drops below 1121 pixels, these responsive styles will kick in for our headings. Now let's go ahead and start with H1 and start building this rule out. So we're gonna put the H1, open and closing curly braces, and then font size. Now here's where clamp comes in. So let's jump over and take a look at how clamp works. Clamp basically accepts three parameters, a minimum value, a preferred value, and a maximum value. So in this case, our minimum value would be the smallest we ever want our heading to be. Our preferred value is going to be some responsive unit that scales our heading as the viewport changes. And then the maximum value is gonna be the biggest we ever want our heading to be. So with that understood, we can jump over here and we can go ahead and put in a clamp and then we know our minimum, let's say we want it to be 22 pixels at its smallest. Once it's scaled down small enough, it will be around 22 pixels. And then I'm gonna skip this one. We'll come back and fix that, the uh, preferred value. That's gonna be our responsive uh, unit, which will be a viewport width value, but we're gonna figure that out in a second. We know that we want our H1 to be 105 pixels at its largest, which this is why I told you to write down those sizes, because you're gonna match whatever you've set up in Oxygen as your actual H1 size, that's gonna be your maximum value. Now we need to handle this middle parameter, which is our responsive value. This is what kind of takes over between 22 pixels and 105 pixels to handle the scaling. So to figure that out, we, there's this handy calculator at web-development.space slash tools slash px-2 dash vw. And basically what we can do is we can tell it at 1120 pixels viewport width, we want our heading to be 105 pixels. And what that will do is that'll calculate a viewport width value that equals 105 pixels at 1120 viewport width. So then we know that once this kicks in at 1120 pixels, we're gonna have 105 pixel heading, but it will scale as the viewport changes. And we don't really wanna use 
too many decimal places, so we're going to actually just round this probably down to nine. So we use nine VW, which is viewport width, and that will be our middle parameter here. So nine VW, okay? So now let's save this and let's jump up to the front end. And as you saw before, when we scale this down, it doesn't change sizes and eventually overflows. And we're gonna pull this up and inspect our heading so that we can see the computed font size down here. So right now we're at 105 pixels and it stays at 105, it never changes. All right, so we've saved our, our fluid typography CSS and we're gonna refresh here. And now you can see it's still 105. Let's change this to 1121 pixels, viewport width, okay? So once we start scaling down, we should start seeing our font size change. So right now we're at 105, we go to 1120 and it jumps down to 100. Okay, so there's a little bit of a jump there, but not too bad because we calculated uh, using that pixel to viewport width calculator to make sure it's gonna be close when the viewport width kicks in. And now if we continue scaling down, you're gonna see that our font size now is responsive and we can just click and drag this down. And that font size is gonna continue to scale until we reach our minimum value which is gonna be 22 pixels. So it gets to about there and then doesn't scale anymore. But as you can see, the result is much, much better. We get down to around 230 pixels viewport width before anything even starts wrapping. So that's perfect. And that was just one simple line of CSS to give us that nice fluid behavior. So now we can jump into oxygen and just repeat this for our other elements. So let's go to H2. I'm just gonna copy and paste this, change this to an H2, and now we need to adjust this. So I'm gonna leave the minimum value at 22 pixels. I don't really wanna go much smaller than that, so I'll leave it there. And then our maximum value, we need to refer to our notes. Uh, what size do we have our H2 set in oxygen? It is 66 pixels, so we'll go 66 there. And then we take that information, that's 66 pixels, and we go over here and we just swap our 105 for 66 calculate it and we get a viewport width value and in this case I'll probably round up to six viewport width and jump back over here and do that and then we're gonna jump back out front and we'll take a look at it again so we'll jump up here go down to our h2 and you can see it begins scaling as we narrow the viewport width and because we have those different maximum and the different viewport width values for the H1 and H2, they scale proportionally to one another. So your H2 is still smaller than your H1 until you get down to that 22 pixels where, you know, this one stop, the H2 stops shrinking, the H1 will continue shrinking until it's the same size as the H2. So to implement this across all of your H elements, your heading elements, you would just repeat these rules. So you would go to say H3, let's paste that in. H3, font size clamp, and we know our H3 should be 52 pixels at full width. And then we go over here, calculate it based on 52 pixels instead of 66, and we get 4.6. So again, we might round up to something like five there. So we go to five viewport width for that middle value and then we have responsive H3s. So now you can repeat this for all of your headings to make sure they scale properly as a viewport shrinks. Now, if you're concerned about support on browsers that don't support clamp, I think one of the best ways I've found to implement a fallback here in the simplest way possible would just be to add a font size and then the viewport width that you used in your clamp function, so 9VW. And so that will be used if the browser does not support clamp. And so you're still gonna have the same exact scaling effect. Once your viewport reaches 1120 pixels and continues to shrink, your font size is gonna start at whatever 9VW is at 1120 pixels. And because we calculated that, we know it's 105 pixels. And it will scale down, down, down. It just won't ever stop. So it will get really, really tiny eventually. So that's really one of the main downfalls of this fallback. But luckily, only IE and Firefox on Android will be using the static 9VW value. So it should be a pretty small portion of your visitors. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's how to implement a really basic approach at Fluid Typography 
in Oxygen using the CSS clamp function with a fallback for browsers that don't support clamp. Thank you very much for watching.